Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode, and we're going to be talking about historically black colleges and universities and their impact that they have on industry, because it is a huge impact. So to join in this conversation, Miss Ayoka Gay, who is the System and Test Engineer Manager at Snyder Electric. So welcome, Ayoka. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm very excited to have you here. It was, it was, it was a blessing to meet you. I'm very looking forward to this conversation. This is this is. Uh, new territory for eco ask why i'm excited for us to have it to get out here and talk about it maybe just get us started a little bit about your background the impact that the, the, the hbcus have had on you and, and they continue to have on you it sounds like with a lot of work that you're doing absolutely um well i'm from north carolina uh, so north carolina is home to a lot of hbcus i think we're second in the country only to alabama as far as the number oh of i didn't HBCUs. realize that okay yeah we have in the state um so uh And my father is an HBCU graduate. We actually have the same alma mater, uh, Shaw University, uh, which is the oldest HBCU in the South. Um, So my background, like I said, I'm from North Carolina, uh, but have lived all over. My dad was in the military. He was in uh, the Marine Corps. And uh, so I've lived in, I was actually born in California, uh, but I've lived in Virginia. I've lived in Denver, Colorado. Um, Both of my parents are, are native uh, to North Carolina. So all of our family is here, but I spent the bulk of my life um, here in North Carolina. But I started my my schooling, my, my primary education in predominantly white schools. Um, and so I didn't have a lot of exposure to uh, people who, who looked like me uh, from the, the very beginning when I was little. So, and my father was very instrumental in introducing me to uh, black art and black authors. I was a bookworm from little. Uh, so he was very intentional about connecting me with my culture. So uh-huh. as I got older, I knew that I wanted to get my college education at a historically black college or university because I wanted to walk outside my door and see myself on a daily basis and really be immersed in that space. So right. it was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life was to attend an HBCU. That's awesome. That, that's Shaw, that's right in Raleigh, correct? Absolutely. Right in the heart of downtown. All right. That's great. That is great. So, you know, when you, when you look at the HBCUs and where they're at right now, where, where do you think the most progress has been made to support the graduates to really come to industry? Cause I mean, you're, you're, you're right working at Snyder, you're in the heart of industry right now. So I'd love to get your take yeah. on that. Well, honestly, um, I think we've, we've got some work to do there. Okay. Um, but we are certainly, um, beginning the, the work and, and are, are making strides in, in that area, particularly with Schneider. Um, uh-huh. I can speak for, for the work that we're doing. We have established strategic partnerships with HBCUs um, because we understand and recognize that it is an untapped uh, talent pool that, that we can really capitalize on. Um, and anybody who is looking for a job now or is hiring now the job market is is crazy, right? Like yeah, oh, everybody yeah. is, is hiring and, and competing for talent and it's only becoming more competitive. So yeah. we really have to um, not just cast a wider net just to, to get more candidates, but because we want a, a diverse workforce as well. Uh, mm-hmm. And HBCUs are, are responsible for a good percentage of, of the engineers, the, uh, the black engineers that work in this country. So it's, right. it's a natural fit that they would be a good source for us. Well, what, what is that? I'm curious when you said a strategic partnership, what exactly does that look like? I mean, what types of programs are involved there? Sure. So when, when I say strategic partnership, I mean like active recruiting, um, okay. active okay. Uh, engagement with uh, these students at these universities. Um, we have established partnerships with their uh, career development offices, uh, you know, professors. I can speak, um, Shaw, my alma mater, Shaw University is not an engineering school. Um, we are a liberal arts college, but we have even brought and done a, a road show at Shaw uh, to visit some students there and not even so much on a, a recruiting mission, but just to establish the relationship to let them know, like, this is who we are. We're here. This is the work that we do. And, and really had more discussion about just career pathing and how we all got to where we are because everybody comes from from different areas. Right. So right. To, to show them what potential paths are and what's possible. That's, that is awesome. So, I mean, it sounds like, let's just stay on that career path thing for a minute, you know, because it sounds like there's a lot of different career paths. You're, you're the 
system and test engineering manager. You went to Shaw, you're not an engineering school, but you're, you're in engineering right now. Right. It sounds like, so maybe, yeah. maybe unpack that a little bit because the potential pass, it sounds like there's a lot of, of opportunities for technology in the HBCUs that people just may not be considering. Absolutely. Um, I mean, my undergrad, I like, I always knew that I wanted to be in, t- in tech, um, but engineering wasn't something that I really knew a lot about until I actually got in it. So mm. my undergrad degree is uh, in computer information systems. So for folks who may not be familiar with the major, I describe it as computer science and business had a baby. So <laughs> I was taking uh, like programming classes. So I'm not I've coded in C++ and Java and studying system design and methods and discrete mathematics, but I also was taking accounting and right. organizational theory and behavior. So, um, but I started my career out as I was hired as a systems engineer before I was actually a systems engineer. Okay. Uh, I started my career with Lockheed Martin Aeronautics and that was my title when I started. Uh, so I just started to really learn what it was as I was doing the job and then ultimately decided to pursue a degree in it to really fully, I was like, you know, I probably should get some education here if I'm going to call myself an engineer. Um, so I ended up going to Southern Methodist in Dallas and got my master's in system engineering there. Oh, that is great. That is great. So, I mean, it just sounds like a lot, a lot of great opportunities there. You know, if you speak, speaking about great opportunities, if you speak to the industry leaders out there that maybe listen to Eco Ask Why, give them some encouragement. Where, where do they need to be engaging and supporting HBCU graduates? Because it sounds like the, the, the opportunity is just at hand. We just need to lean in a little bit more. Absolutely. Um, if you've got folks on your staff who are uh, HBCU grads, I really encourage you to, to reach out to them and encourage these folks to reach out to them and really hear about what their paths are. Because like I said, there's there's multiple paths in um, companies in general, and this is not specific to industry. I think this is really across the board that we tend to target uh, the, the, these specific schools and these different areas and these specific majors. Right. But the, the more that I've learned throughout my career is that there's there's multiple paths to, to get to where it is that you want to be. It's really about what kind of experiences and skills you, you are seeking and what you're looking to apply. But if you've got folks on your staff who are uh, HBCU grads, talk to them about their path. Talk to them about um, what kind of uh, students and programs that they have at, at their universities. Um, you mm-hmm. know, and take those opportunities to, to go to those campuses and connect with students uh, you know, internships, you know, provide internship opportunities, job shadowing, yeah. mm-hmm. or even just doing uh, like career development, um, you know, discussions for Schneider. We just went to to Shaw and did like resume reviews and mock interviews. Again, just establishing those relationships and, and giving that insight to say, hey, if you're interested in working here, you want to consider this, this, this and that for, you know, as they're looking at what classes and things that they do. That's awesome. And I'm thinking about the, the manufacturing world that we that we serve and we work with, you know, so it sounds like there may be some programs at the HBCUs that, that really directly align and can, cause I mean, we, we hear all the time, the skill set, the skills gap, you know, we're, we're trying to close that yeah. in the industry. Uh, so are there, are there programs that are out there that, that you think could really impact manufacturing from an HBCU standpoint? Are you are you speaking as far as curriculum at these different institutions? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or? the curric- the curriculum that would actually speak directly to those skill sets that we're that we need. I'm just I'm just curious because you mentioned you know Shaw is not an engineering school, but there's obviously a path because sure. because I'm talking to the engineering manager. So you know just just <laughs> curious, you know, what, are there any programs that you know that that stand out to you that maybe you could share with our with our listeners here? I mean, really, I I think all of them, <laughs> honestly. Uh, because it really, for me, you're, you're looking at your, your hard skills, right? So it depends on, and I, I can't, I'm not uh, well-versed in manufacturing specifically, but when, when I'm talking about just the industry overall, um, we are moving to a space where we are trying to, to digitize and integrate a lot of these systems. So you're, you're wanting more people who have you know, experience in computer science, who can code and, and develop applications and have like a systems mindset. Uh, in a systems view. So that's where my, you know, my folks who have like computer information or uh, computer science or data science uh, degrees come in because it's, as we are, you know, we're focused so much on the the core, the hardcore engineering uh, disciplines, you know, we're expanding this view because, you know, we're we're building systems now and not just products or, or components. 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it, and it's hitting the plant floor big time. The systems are that systems approach, you know, there's all sorts of, of, of ways to engage there. So maybe, maybe speak to the HPCU uh, grad right now, or someone is getting ready to graduate from HBCU college and, and you're trying to encourage them to come to industry. You know, why should, why should they give them, give them some advice there. So I, I love this industry because there are so many different things that you can do in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just uh, a, a one trick pony, right? Yeah. So you can have your hands on a physical component. You can have, you know, if you're more of a hands on person and you like to, to build and design and, and architect solutions, you know, there's space to do that. If you want to, if you're more of a, a finance person, you can come in and work to, to find the, the financing and the, and the funding to, to, to shape these, these types of programs and initiatives. Right. Or if you are in, in sales or business marketing, you know, somebody has to sell this stuff. Somebody has to make the case to our customers, you know, not just here in the States, but globally. Right. So there's, there's a lot of potential and a lot of different pieces that are built around this entire ecosystem of the industry that, that can really, like I said, there's, there's multiple doors. Right. That's right. And I guess that's just, just one thing advice is just keep your eyes open because, you know, like I said, you're, you're at Snyder right there. And, and I sound, it sounds like from your career, you know, it's, you didn't start at Snyder obviously, but you know, you, you take the opportunity right. to see and evaluate the different options and then lean into those when they, when those doors open. Absolutely. And seek those opportunities and be intentional about what it is that you want to accomplish and, and what it is that you're trying to put out in the world. Right. Like, do you want to be a part of the, the latest mechanical or industrial innovation? Or do you want to be a part of, you know, how, how do we, uh, you know, redesign funding models or business models or strategy? Mm -hmm. You know, what is it that you really want to, to be a part of and, and seek out those opportunities and the people who are doing it and, and talk to them about their path? I love it. I love it. Now you, you mentioned internships and those, those co-op type opportunities, you know, for, for your potential oh, yeah. employer out there right now, is that a, the best way that you think we should be engaging the next generation of those leaders from the HBCUs or are there other ways? Uh, I don't, I don't know that I would call it the best, but it, I think it is one, uh, one thing that could be in your, in your toolkit. Um, internships, uh, co-op opportunities, uh, even, you know, consulting with institutions on, on their curriculum, you know, mm. creating partnerships and relationships there where you can say, you know, okay, I know you've got these, these majors, but these are the skills that we're looking for, mm -hmm. you know, and how, how do we partner to develop some of this talent and create a pipeline? You know, if you've got a HBCU in your town or in your region, you know, how can you develop that, that relationship and not just, Hey, you know, call us when you're looking for a job. Right, but we right. want to be invested in training these folks, and specifically, I'll I'll be selfish with Schneider, you know, we can you know train these folks specifically to come and work for us, right? Because if right. You, you can tailor make uh, you know these these students for for the careers that that you're hiring for, right? And I think as for industry, we've got a, a responsibility and really a great opportunity to build relationships so that we can be a part of that discussion and not just on the receiving end and trying mm -hmm. to upskill and reskill once we get folks in the door. Mm hmm. And it also sounds like that what, what employers need to be thinking about a couple of words come to mind, being proactive and being intentional about, you know, having Absolutely. these conversations and, and really just leaning in here. Absolutely. OK, very great. So now people may be now they're getting excited. They're, they're hearing your passion. Are you OK? I can hear it. I can, I can feel, feel it. it. <laughs> I can feel it. I'm like, all right, this is awesome. So <laughs> speak to someone if they want to to support and bring awareness to support HBCUs moving forward, where should they be going and spending their time to really be that support, that advocate, if you will, for the HBCUs? For sure. Um, I think there are, uh, are a couple of different ways that, that you can do it. Uh, if you are in a company that has, and, and a lot of companies do now have different affinity organizations or employee resource groups um, for, like, for example, Schneider, we have uh, an employee resource network is what we call it. Um, but we've got a Black Professionals uh, ERN uh, at a national level and uh, for some of our, our local um, areas, uh, local offices across the country. Mm -hmm. And it's open to everybody. It's not just for Black professionals. The, the intent and the mission of the organization is, is to promote the advancement and the development uh, and those community relationships and brand awareness and all of that 
around black employees, but it's open to everybody. So even if you are, are not uh, a black professional, uh, you are invited to, to come and join and be an ally of black professionals and, oh. and educate yourself and, and learn and have that awareness of what the experience may be for a black professional and what you can add to the conversation to support the development and, and the advancement there. So right. that's one place that I would recommend to start. Did, so do they have like meetings and court like events for, for that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have um, monthly meetings and we talk and we have different events that are centered around. So for, for Schneider in particular, we're centered around, um, we have different pillars. So we focus okay. on awareness. We focus on development, um, business development and community. So we, and we center our events around uh, those, those different uh, pillars. So we try to bring uh, events and like have panel speakers and different development events. We just celebrated uh, Engineers Week in February. Uh, so we invited, there's a, a local magnet school, uh, Southeast Raleigh High School here that has an engineering track. And we had some of their students come out and join us for Engineering Week. And they spent the day uh, at our office and got to get a tour of the labs and uh, we got, they got t-shirts and lunch and got to participate in an engineering build with, with other engineers. And, you know, I had several of them walking out the door saying, you know, you're, you're going to see me one day. I'll be back. You know, you're going to see me, uh, you know, look for my name. Right. Uh, so right. It's, it's in this so it's creating uh, those kind of relationships as well. Um, but that is, that is one place that I would start for, for HBCUs in particular. Uh, uh -huh. If there are uh, HBCUs in your area, or even if they aren't, I always point people to just begin to educate yourself about uh, the different HBCUs uh, and what their real purpose is. Uh, you know, these schools were, were born out of a necessity, right? And, and we're in a place and, and it's come to a question of, you know, the relevance and, and do we still need this, you know, because, you know, we're, we're all equal and, you know, we all have equal opportunity and access, but that isn't necessarily the, the case across the board, right? And we still need spaces uh, that can can speak to that experience and being in a position to support it and have awareness of it uh, and just being willing to reach out and create those relationships to, again, be good allies and right. make those connections and, and provide the resources and make those um, those steps forward. Right. Right. And I think just just being willing uh, obviously, uh, as well, just to have the conversation and educate yourself and not be so yeah. closed minded. I mean, just, you know, I, I was so glad we were able to connect just to have so we could bring this type of conversation to eco ask why, you know, so it just it brings, yeah. you know, just leaning in. But I think those programs sound awesome. I, I, I'm excited to see those young those young men and women that, that they come back to work for Snyder because you sound like you guys created an opportunity for them to really just lean in and, and grow and, and get excited about industry. And that's what we need more of. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what it's all about. And you can recreate that experience, not just for students coming in the door, but for your employees too. That's right. You know, especially, and, and I, I know I keep talking about Schneider, but that's, you know, that's, that's who's paying the bills today. It's okay. <laughs> um, but we, we're we very intentional about development and exposing folks because we're, we're a global company, right? So there's a lot of different areas and we've got a ton of projects and a ton of offerings. Um, and so we're, but we're very intentional about making sure that folks are, um, have a clear understanding and, and are passionate and engaged in what we're doing. Right. Um, and so I, I take that spirit with me across the board. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Yoko, okay, this has been great. Now we, we call it eco ask why we always wrap up with the why at, at the end of our shows. So, so give our listeners out there, what's the why? So why should industrial leaders really embrace the HBCU graduates as they try to grow diverse, robust, and, and really talented workforce in the future? Absolutely. I mean, just to, to make it real simple and plain, diversity is good for business. Um, you know, it's, it's the right thing to do, <laughs> but as far as business is concerned, um, you know, if you want your team to be um, high performing, if you want to have high retention, if you want to uh, spearhead innovation, diversity is, is a diverse workforce is, is where you're going to get that. Bringing in and not just it's not just about ethnicity or nationality or gender, but diversity of thought. So having different perspectives that are looking at a solution or, or a particular challenge that the industry is having, you want folks looking at it from different angles. Because if you're hitting you know, the same thing with the same tool, you're not going to get very far. 
So you want that variety. You want that those different perspectives. And that is really what's going to make the difference for your company. Absolutely. Absolutely. And HBCUs, well, there's, there's no better place to start. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Now, where can our listeners go to connect with you and learn more about, you know, HBCUs? Where, where, where do you want to point them at? Well, uh, there are a number of different places. Um, you can, there are a couple of organizations that really spearhead and, and advocate and promote uh, for HBCUs. And, and HBCUs are divided into to two camps. We've got public institutions, which are state institutions, and uh-huh. we've got private institutions. So there's an organization, uh, United Negro College Fund, that uh, is a, a primary advocate, an organization that, that centers themselves around the private HBCUs but also Thurgood Marshall uh, Foundation, which focuses on our, our public. But they work very hard to uh, create the opportunities that I'm talking about, professional opportunities for students at HBCUs, scholarship opportunities, uh, you know, educate like, uh, you know, industry experience, connecting these institutions at large and advocating with them on, on Capitol Hill as well to make sure right. that we've got legislation and, and, na- and national federal funding in place to right. support these schools so they can, you know, keep churning out these great uh, graduates and, and creating these, these future global leaders of industry. So those are the two places that I would encourage folks to start. Or if you've got, you know, an HBC in your backyard, there's over a hundred of them <laughs> over the country. So I'm sure there's one uh, close to your neck of the woods. You just, just got to take a peek and look. That's right. That's right. We'll we'll make sure we get those links in the show notes for listeners out there, as well as a link directly to Ayoka. So you'll be able to connect with her on on LinkedIn. And I know you're doing some wonderful things over there. And I'm sure you'd be be willing to to share your knowledge with others as well. So anything else you have, Ayoka, that you'd like to share today? No, I I think I just want to thank you for the opportunity for, because I think this is an important discussion. And HBCUs have certainly uh, been a lot in the news lately. Uh, you know, with uh, all of our, our HBCU graduates are doing some amazing things. We're all we're all over the place. And I just want to be a part of continuing the conversation. I'm so glad you gave me the opportunity to do so here. Well, I can, I can promise you this. The pleasure has been all mine. I've loved it. I think this is a powerful conversation. And, and thank you so much for sharing all the wisdom and insight. So listeners, be sure to go check out those show notes, connect with Ayoka and, and, and go see and, and, and support the HBCUs near you. So thank you, Ayoka. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. What a powerful conversation that was with Ayoka. And I tell you what, you know, talking about HBCUs and the importance and the impact they have on industry, it's phenomenal. And the things that she's doing to help support and, and, and be the voice, let's lean into that. Let's look for those opportunities because the skills, the skills gap is real and we need talent. And that talent can be found in a lot of these HBCUs and the wonderful workforce that exists. Now, the war stories. Keep the war stories coming. We really want them coming in. You can go right there in the links on the show notes. You can connect with us and send us the good, the bad, maybe the funny. We like to get those as well. And if you're liking Eco Ask Why, share it with someone. Go ahead. Send a, send a text message. Send an email. Whatever you need to do, just get the message out there, particularly on a message like this from an HBCU standpoint. Share it out there because we need to have more conversations, more, more discussion, and, and getting this awareness out there. Give us a rating, write a review. That makes all the difference in the world. It really does. So don't just be a consumer. Actually go in and do a rating and review. That really helps, makes a big impact. Enjoy your day and keep asking why.